Welcome back to the job site. My name is Jim, and I'm here to help you understand the basic safety rules concerning the fall protection requirements on this project. As we discussed earlier, falls are the leading cause of death in construction. Anytime you work at any height, you need to take it seriously. Falls from unprotected edges, ladders, scaffolds, and roofs can be prevented. The safety requirements for scaffolding are listed in subpart L. Now let's take a look at our scaffolding. Each year, dozens of workers are killed and thousands are injured in scaffold-related accidents. Common scaffold hazards include, one, collapse of the scaffold due to instability or overloading. Two, falls from scaffolding due to the lack of fall protection. Three, being struck by falling tools, work materials, or debris. Four, electrocution due to the location of the scaffold around overhead power lines. There are three types of scaffolding discussed in OSHA 1926 subpart L. They are aerial lifts, suspended scaffolding, and supported scaffolding. Aerial lifts are vehicle-mounted, elevated work platforms. Suspended scaffolds are work platforms suspended by ropes or other non-rigid means from an overhead structure. Supported scaffolds are those work platform systems that are supported by rigid, load-bearing members such as poles and frames. We'll just focus your safety training on metal frame scaffolds, which are the most common type of supported scaffold we use on our projects. Working from scaffolding is much easier and safer than working from a ladder. It's more stable and it provides you with a wide work platform. Let me show you how to set it up so it's safe and secure. Make sure the scaffolding does not block fire exits, fire alarms, and fire suppression systems. Scaffolding, like ladders, has a load capacity rating. Light duty scaffolding can support 25 pounds per square foot, medium duty scaffolding can support 50 pounds per square foot, and heavy duty scaffolding can support 75 pounds per square foot. The key to safe scaffolding is a solid foundation. See how we use mud sills, base plates, and adjustable screw jacks for the foundation of the scaffold system. The base plates and mud sills help spread out the load and keep the scaffold from sinking into the ground. Note that the base plates are nailed to the mud sills. This helps provide strong, stable foundations. Adjusting these screw jacks makes the leveling of the scaffolding easy and safe. Never stack bricks, concrete blocks, or scraps of wood under the frame to level it. If you plan on moving the scaffolding over solid level ground, then add wheel casters to the base sections. Remember to lock or block all four of your wheels to prevent movement of the scaffold while you're on top of the scaffold system. Do not move the scaffolding while you or another person is on it unless the scaffold has been specifically designed for this action. The next thing to look at when erecting scaffolding is to see how you can maintain the stability of your scaffold system. When erecting any scaffold, you need to give some thought to what bracing will be required. A brace in simple terms, is a structural member used to stiffen a structure. A triangle is the most rigid of geometric shapes. Any square or rectangle without a diagonal brace will easily collapse. For example, imagine a cardboard box with the top and bottom flaps opened up. The box will easily flatten or form a parallelogram. In a similar manner, a single scaffold section built with only end frames will not be rigid and will easily shift into a parallelogram shape. All metal frame scaffolds require the use of cross bracing. It helps in the squaring and aligning of the legs so that the scaffold stays plumb, level, and square. It also gives the frame added rigidity. When you look at your scaffolding, you should see the X created by the cross bracing in each section of the scaffolding. Another way to stabilize your scaffolding is to tie it or anchor it to the structure. Do you remember the 4 to 1 ratio we used for ladders? Well, there's a four to one ratio for scaffolding too. See how we've tied the scaffold tower to the building? Anytime the scaffolding height reaches four times the dimension of the scaffolding width, we tie it to the building for stability. The maximum horizontal spacing of the anchors is 30 feet. The vertical spacing of the anchors is dependent on the width of the scaffolding. If the width of the scaffolding is three feet or less, the vertical spacing of the anchors should not be any more than 20 feet apart. 
If the width of the scaffolding is greater than three feet, then the maximum vertical space in the anchors is no more than 26 feet apart. Outriggers can also be used to provide scaffold stability when exceeding the four to one ratio. Fall protection is required on any scaffold system that is 10 feet or more above the lower level. This can be achieved either through the use of harnesses and lanyards or guardrails. We've already discussed harnesses, lanyards, and guardrails at the beginning of your orientation, but there are just a few minor differences when using guardrails on scaffolds. The top rail on scaffolding still has to be able to withstand 200 pounds of force, but has a slight height dimension difference. The height range for the top rail on scaffolding is 38 inches to 45 inches, as compared to the 42 inches plus or minus three inches for top rails used elsewhere. Usual top rail minimum height is 39 inches. Scaffold top rail minimum height may be one inch lower at 38 inches. Note that a mid rail and tow board are still required on scaffolding and have to withstand a force of 150 pounds and 50 pounds respectively, just like regular guardrail systems. And no matter what, the maximum height of any top rail is still 45 inches. Now here's another difference for scaffolding guardrails. Instead of guardrails, cross bracing may serve as a top rail or mid rail, providing that the crossing point is between 38 and 48 inches above the work platform for a top rail, or between 20 and 30 inches above the work platform for a mid rail. Another form of fall protection on scaffolding is to limit the size of the gap between the edge of the scaffolding and the face of the building. The dimension of this gap cannot be more than 14 inches. Having a fully planked work surface without any openings will help reduce fall hazards. The scaffolding platform should be fully planked with no more than a one inch gap between the individual plank units or between the planks and the uprights. We can either use aluminum work platforms or timber as our work surface. The aluminum work platforms have hooks on both ends to secure it and prevent the work platform from slipping off. Timber boards can also be used. As noted in Appendix A of Subpart L, these timber boards are rough cut and milled from a solid piece of lumber. They are not planed like regular dimensional lumber, such as the 2x4s we use for framing on job sites. Lumber designated as scaffold grade meets a number of particularly high standards which most construction grade lumber does not meet. In fact, dimensional lumber is typically only as two-thirds as strong as scaffold grade lumber. Scaffold boards need to be inspected on a regular basis. Because there's no way to tell at what point a split has become unsafe, any planking with splits more than a few inches in length should not be permitted to remain in service. Other things to look for include any fungus, decay, chemical damage, or evidence of insect attack. Wood platforms may be coated periodically with wood preservatives, fire retardant finishes, and slip resistant finishes. However, the coating must be clear and not opaque. Not using clear coats can hide damage or other imperfections in the wood. The end of scaffold platforms or boards need to extend over the center line of the support or end frames of the scaffolding by at least six inches, unless the platform or boards are restrained by hooks or equivalent means. But don't extend the board too far. If the length of the platform is 10 feet or less, then the board needs to extend at least six inches, but not more than 12 inches past its support. If the platform is greater than 10 feet in length, then the board can extend no more than 18 inches past its support. Anything more than 18 inches could cause someone to step on the end of the board and cause the board to flip up. Take a look at this mobile scaffolding tower and identify any hazards you see. Make sure a competent person inspects the scaffolding on a daily basis. OSHA defines a competent person as one who is capable of identifying existing and predictable hazards in the surroundings or working conditions which are unsanitary, hazardous, or dangerous to employees. They also have authorization to take prompt corrective measures to eliminate them. Once we correct the problems you found, we need to have a safe way to get on the scaffolding. Workers are most vulnerable to fall hazards when climbing on or off a scaffold. Always look for a safe way to get on or off your scaffold. And never, never climb on the cross bracing to get on or off your scaffold. Your weight could potentially bend and damage the cross bracing, which could cause the scaffolding to become unstable. Safe ways to get on or off the scaffold include portable ladders, hook-on ladders, and attachable ladders. If you have more than a 35-foot high climb to get to the top of the scaffolding, then rest platforms must be provided for climbers every 35 feet or less. 
If you use a portable ladder, make sure you position it so you don't tip the scaffolding over as you climb. The position of this ladder on the front side of the scaffolding could cause the scaffolding to tip over as the climber reaches the top of the ladder. A better location for this ladder would be to place it on the end of the scaffolding. Don't forget your ladder safety. Maintain the 4 to 1 slope when setting up your ladder and be sure to anchor the top and bottom of the ladder so it doesn't move. Hook on and attachable ladders are another safe option. Just make sure that the ladder is specifically designed for the type of scaffold in which it is being installed. Attach the ladder so that the lowest rung is no more than 24 inches above the floor. OSHA specifies that these ladders must have a minimum rung length of 11 half inches and a maximum space between the rungs of 16 and 3 quarter inches. If the rungs on the scaffold end frames meet the minimum rung length and spacing requirements, then climbing the end frames is a possible option. Using stair towers is another safe way to gain access to the top of your scaffolding. These stairs can be added internally to your scaffolding or added as an external stairway system. The bottom step of the stairs needs to be no more than 24 inches above the floor, just like the rungs of the attachable ladders. Climbers need to be protected from fall hazards when using the stair system. Therefore, the stair system must have stair rails, which means that top rails and mid rails are installed on each open side. Since you're working at height, make sure that you're aware of the overhead power lines. Maintain at least 10 feet of distance between the scaffold and those power lines. Let's review what we just discussed concerning scaffolding safety. Every employee who works on scaffolding must be trained. This training has to include the nature of any electrical hazards, fall hazards, and falling object hazards in the work area. The correct procedures for dealing with electrical hazards and for erecting, maintaining, and disassembling the fall protection systems and falling object protection systems being used. The maximum intended load and the load carrying capacities of the scaffolds used. It's time to take a break. We covered a lot of information in a short period of time. For more information regarding scaffolding safety, get a copy of OSHA Publication 3150, a guide to scaffold use in the construction industry. You can find this guide online. Anytime you work at height, you need to take it seriously, especially on ladders and scaffolding. Inspect your equipment and be aware of your work surroundings to help ensure your safety.